Benny Johnson was just robbed outside of an In and Out Burger. I'm just going through Twitter. Where in news. California? He went there to do a segment on why it's closing because of all the robberies, and he got robbed while he was doing the segment. Oh man, that's gonna have a viral video. He just tweeted that. You know when when I was so look for that. That might be might be on his social media to watch. I know you guys like Benny Johnson. You know, when when I was in Los Angeles, I stayed at our daughter's house, and she lives in a nice area, yeah. which was very nice for me to know because I was really worried about her. She, The place where she lived, she found it on her own. We had nothing to do with it. Yeah, it's nice. And we don't know that area. We don't know LA. And we just had to take her word. You know, she told us it was fine. And um, there's a lot of, you know, I was telling you, there's a lot of homeless people in California yeah. and we have homeless people here. And I, I told you, I noticed the homeless people seem nicer in California than the ones here in Florida. They just seemed, I guess they got that California hippie kind of thing going on. But um, the in and out broke uh, first place I went when I got there was, I, I've never you been said in, it was in and out, in and out. The French fries at in and out are awful, but it's the best hamburger I've ever had at in and out. Well, Benny Johnson just got robbed there, but there was, remember I told you there was a guy in the drive through that we, we ate inside cause I wanted to go inside, but we pulled up and there was a drive through line and there was a guy in the drive through mm-hmm. outside. And I thought it was like here at Chick-fil-A. If you go to Chick-fil-A here in Florida, they, they have Chick-fil-A workers that come up to your car and take your order at your car. I, I, I guess I don't know why they do it, but they do that. And I thought that's what this guy was doing. But he was a homeless guy asking people for money to wash the windows, you know. And um, Benny Johnson, uh, he, you think he's happy he got robbed? I think he's happy because now everybody will be talking about it. Well, I'm sure he's happy he didn't get s- stabbed or anything or, or you know, both, I don't know if it's Things on happen. video. When I, you know, when I made that video that I went- it's Obviously in a very bad neighborhood because they clo- they're closing yeah. the In-N-Out mm-hmm. Burger because of the robberies at yeah. that specific one uh-huh. is where he went and then he got robbed. You know, crime has gone through the roof. You know, even here in Miami, um, we have to go to Miami from time to time because you, you, you have uh, doctors in Miami. But I don't go to Miami to make YouTube videos too much, mm-hmm. and I be, because the crime's so bi- bad down there right yeah. now that I haven't felt safe to go to Miami. Like on my Vespa, I've I've wanted to take my Vespa down the beach road from mm-hmm. here where we live all the way down to Miami because it's a nice ride. But the crime's so high in Miami right now, I'm afraid I'll get jacked on my on my Vespa. Well, we were driving down mm-hmm. to Miami once a couple years ago, and there was. We heard gunshots. There was a shootout on 995. Yeah, well, right I, near our car. We went to my. We were in Miami just uh, a couple of weeks back, and the, and uh, a car cut us off. It was being chased by police on 995, and it got away. The guy got away yeah. from the cops. I it's couldn't. Crazy. Th- let me tell you, this car that got away from the cops. I was watching it, and it just disappeared be- in front of my eyes. That this guy was like a. He was like a baby driver. Yeah. <laughs> he was like a professional driver yeah, to get away. <laughs> but, you know, the thing, this thing with Biddy Johnson, it's, it's such a weird thing because, you know, I made that video when I went to vote a few weeks ago. And that video has gotten a lot of views. And when I, uh, it's the one where the poll worker mm-hmm. came up to me and was trying to throw me out because I was, uh, I was you know, had, I had my hat on and I was do- making a video. And before she came up, I was making a vlog for my YouTube channel, which you all should follow, Brian Craig Show on YouTube. And I, and the, it, there wasn't really much happening because I went, it, was, it was a primary day. Mm-hmm. I went to vote at an off time on an off day. There weren't that many people there. There wasn't yeah. a lot of excitement. And I was saying to myself, you know, I don't even think I want to put this video up on YouTube because there's not much happening here. Right. And then I, I saw, because I was, you know, I make YouTube videos on my iPhone. I, so I could see behind me and I saw the poll worker walking towards me. And then I said on the video, I said, oh, this is going to get good. Okay. So I say on the video, oh, I see the poll worker. She's going to come kick me out. I said, oh, this is going to get good. And it did. It got, it's, it's gotten almost 400,000 views on, on YouTube, that video. And this is the thing with Benny Johnson. Benny Johnson, it was like me. He, uh, he's at in and out Burger. He's doing a story and a video that you might watch. And okay. You know, Things not much. happen. Then he gets robbed. Now, all of a sudden, it's a viral video. So I say Benny Johnson's happy he got robbed. He just wrote, um, here, I'll show you. Did the guy I just have got a weapon? robbed at In-N-Out Burger. Mm. That's all he said. And he's got a video about being at In-N-Out Burger at this location. So if you, it's in Oakland, California, permanently closed. So if you go to his Twitter, it's at the top of his Twitter feed. He pinned it there. 
and I'm sure he'll tell you the whole story. He said he was robbed at the Oakland and Outburger while shooting a segment about a closing due to robbery. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but I don't know. Well, he's, oh, my gosh. He's, here, I'll show you. He's what showing happened? stuff on the video. It's crazy. Okay, yeah, let me play the video. So, Benny Johnson, he has a, a short that he made that he put on X, right? Right. And he goes through what happened. So, we'll play this. This is Benny Johnson at the In and Outburger. And by the way, let me know in the comments. Because uh, I know we got a lot of people out there in California. Do you agree with me that In and Out Burger has incredible hamburgers, but the French fries are w- the worst? They're are the they worst. crinkle fries? I don't remember, but they because I don't like crinkle they fries. They are. What are the, they? Soggy? Or Five Guys has horrible fries. They uh, they tasted like paper. It, it just they oh, were wow. awful. But you guys, let me know what you McDonald's think. McDonald's has the. But best. They were really bad. All right, so here it is, Benny Johnson. Fast food franchise. They are wildly popular and expanding everywhere except for in one location. Welcome to the only in and out burger that has ever closed. This is a historic location. You can see the iconic building, but there's a fence around it. The signs have been ripped down, and the windows are all boarded up. Why did this in and out burger close? Well, because people were getting robbed in the drive through lane. 1,000 different criminal incidents of people being robbed while trying to get a burger in the drive through lane here. in and out Yeah, in and out got the out of here. The reason that California has descended into a third world criminal hellhole is because of Democrat soft on crime policies that defund the police and that view the criminals as the victim and not the tax paying citizen. Speaking of being a victim, we were literally robbed while we were filming this video. Middle of the afternoon, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. And the garden smashed. Man, it's time to get the hell out of Okay. So they broke uh, they broke the window of their SUV. They had all their equipment inside. Oh my god. So we had a crew with them. And that's what they did. Boom. Wow. They smashed the window and took it. You know, while they were out walking around, even, I guess. Even here, we, we live in a low crime neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I tell Kathy, we live in Copland because we have a lot of cops that live in our neighborhood. And they, and they, we do. they bring home the cruisers. I mean, you have to be an idiot to, to yeah, do there's crime like three here. on our street. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, when I go to the radio station in the morning, I have my uh, MacBook, mm-hmm. I have my iPad, I've and I've got a expensive microphone and, and and other things, and I keep things in my backpack. And uh, you know, a lot of people they get these fancy backpacks. You know, I have a nice backpack, but it's just a cheap, ordinary backpack. You don't want to have a fancy backpack that looks like you got fancy stuff in it. You know what I mean? You want to kind of dress anyway. But uh, if on the way home I stop somewhere, I go to a store, I go a, into a gas station, I go anywhere, I take the backpack with me. I never leave my mm-hmm. computer and electronics in the car. I just well, never do that. Do you think that it was kind of dumb? Obviously, they were walking around and they had left some stuff in the car, right? I don't think it happened right in front of them. I don't know he's a little vague. But do you think it's dumb to go to the highest, one of the highest crime cities in the country, Oakland, California, at a restaurant that's closing due to crime and park your car and leave it there full of equipment that's worth thousands of dollars? Well, I mean, maybe that's not was, the smartest move. No, but you know. I'm not blaming him. I'm just saying maybe he wasn't thinking. Benny straight. Johnson lives in Florida now. Yeah. He lives in, in the, on the west coast of Florida. We're on the east coast. He lives on, uh, we're in the real Florida. He's on the west coast of Florida, the Gulf Coast. We live on the ocean side. But he's on the ocean side too. It's a peninsula. Well, he's on the Gulf of Mexico. We're on the right. Atlantic Ocean. I mean, he's on the Gulf oh, Coast. We're on saying. the Atlantic Ocean yeah, side. Um, so he doesn't know LA that well. And he this happened in the middle of the day. So I, he probably felt a sense of safety because it was the it's middle daytime. of the day. And he also said that people were being robbed while they were in the drive-through. And here's here's the thing it's with crazy. with me and Kathy and I, I. I didn't do this before we were married, and you got me to do this. 27 years ago, we've been married. Whenever we're in a Mm drive-thru, I always leave room where I can escape if I have to. Like, I don't like to get, not if I'm getting, I don't think about getting robbed, but if I want to leave, I want to be able to get out of there. Right. Right? So I always have enough space between me and the car in front of me to get out of there. I always do that. I never get myself boxed in a drive-thru. Some drive throughs you cannot help it because they have like a a little curb, a wall or a partition or something. But when it's possible, when it's open, I always leave about six feet. Yeah. We're at the, if we're at the Walgreens or the bank, or I've always done that because McDonald's anywhere. I just, and I think I just learned that from being, you know, being a girl and a girl driver, you have to be a little extra careful. 
And these are things like my dad would tell me when I started driving, like always make sure you're not, you don't get boxed in. He would say, leave six feet in front of you I even, because um, people would rob you. Yeah. He would say, if you're, if you're in a drive through somewhere and you, and you don't have room to get out, somebody yeah. can pull up right behind you and you're trapped. So he would tell me always leave five or six feet in front of you, no matter what. So you can turn the car and get out quickly. So I've always done that. And, you know, the same thing at gas stations when you go to gas. You know, my mother had, uh, got her purse snatched at a mm-hmm. gas station and uh, she was pumping gas, left her purse in the car. That was a big thing and in the 90s. They here. reached in and took her purse. That happened so much down here back yeah. then. Yeah. Well, you, that, see, that's something else you have to learn as a woman. Now, I learned that too. And my mom told me when I started driving, she said, never leave your purse on the fr- passenger seat. No. Put it in the back seat. Put it. Behind the, That's right. and I always, whenever I drove, my purse was always behind the passenger front seat, so I could get to it. That's but right. I, I never would leave it on the front seat yeah. ever. So you know, if, this this In and Out Burger, they're doing the robberies at the drive through. I wouldn't go to that drive through. I'd go to a different In and Out Burger. But Benny, the, the, let me know in the comments what you think. I think Benny Johnson is happy that he got robbed. Okay, because now I'm wondering, do you think he thing. left the equipment in there on purpose to get robbed? What I'd like to know, I like Benny. This will go viral. He'll make listen, enough money off this video to pay for that equipment. I like Benny more. Johnson. Okay, don't get. I like Benny Johnson. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, because you know, I would not know. I you know, I don't like Ben Shapiro, but I like Benny Johnson. Yeah, everybody does. But you know, you got. I'd like to know, like, how long was the car? Did they did they leave the car there hoping it would get broken into? Because they show some videos of wondering. some break ins before, right? So I'm wondering if. They parked their car there in a way and left it. On purpose. Yeah. Thinking it might get broken into. People do that. And then they got lucky and it did. People do that kind of stuff for something to go viral. I mean, that's how crazy things are now. Uh, Yeah. People People do do things like that to have a viral video. Yeah, that's right. Let us know what you think in the comment. All right. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. Are you battling anxiety, stress, fear? Do you have anger management issues or seeking to enhance sports performance? These are issues so many people face but never find the relief that they're looking for. If you're ready to unlock the power of your subconscious mind and take control of your life, then visit subconscioushypnotherapy.com. At subconscioushypnotherapy.com, you'll find Nader McHale, a clinically certified hypnotherapist and esteemed member of the American Hypnosis Association, as well as the National Association of Hypnotherapists. With his years of experience, he specializes in guiding individuals just like you through their subconscious to overcome obstacles and achieve their goals. Sessions are tailored to your specific needs and are conducted via Zoom. Visit subconscioushypnotherapy.com and schedule your free 15-minute consultation to make sure it's the right fit for you. So how does hypnotherapy work? Through a deeply relaxed state, you're hypnotized to reprogram your subconscious mind with positive suggestions. Imagine overcoming your fear of flying and replacing it with calm and relaxation. That's just one example of the powerful transformations possible with subconscious hypnotherapy. Using a variety of modalities and techniques such as imagery, EFT, and NLP, Nader customizes each session to fit your unique needs. Say goodbye to those limiting beliefs and hello to a brighter, more fulfilling future. Visit subconscioushypnotherapy.com and book your free consultation today. Subconscioushypnotherapy.com, where positive Positive change begins within subconscioushypnotherapy.com. Men, are you tired of looking tired? You can turn your tired eyes into a vibrant and refreshed look with a specially formulated under eye cream for men at Amazon.com slash shops slash Meditati. That's M-E-D-I-T-A-T-I. This anti-aging formula is designed to repair and protect your eyes against the common signs of aging. Dark circles, puffiness, and those pesky crow's feet gone. With Meditati, you'll say goodbye to those tired eyes and hello to a youthful appearance. It's packed with peptides, vitamins, C, jojoba oil, green tea, CoQ10, and other essential ingredients. This formula will keep your under eyes bright and refreshed. It also keeps your skin hydrated with the highest quality natural and organic ingredients. It's crafted by skin care experts and this non-greasy, lightweight formula absorbs quickly and efficiently nourishing the skin around your eyes. So if you're tired of puffiness and wrinkles, go right now to Amazon.com slash shops slash Meditati. It's M-E-D-I-T-A-T-I. Don't miss out on this chance to give your eyes the care they deserve because you and your eyes deserve it. Amazon.com slash shops slash Meditati. 
calling all retro gaming enthusiasts. Check out Phoenix Full of Light on Twitch for a gaming experience like no other. Phoenix Full of Light plays almost any retro game, along with video game music. You can also follow Phoenix Full of Light on TikTok and Instagram for positive motivation and encouragement to brighten your day. At Phoenix underscore full underscore of underscore light. Level up your retro gaming experience and spread positivity along the way. Phoenix Full of Light on Twitch, TikTok, and Instagram. With spring here and summer right around the corner, it's time to start playing pickleball. And there's only one way to play pickleball right, and that's with Big Dink Paddles. They're the Trader Joe's of pickleball. They have great quality gear that won't break the bank. And you pickleball pros, if you're sick and tired of shelling out big bucks for paddles that just don't cut it on the court, it's time to discover the Big Dink difference. They've poured their heart and soul into creating paddles that deliver the performance you crave at prices that won't make your wallet cry. Because let's face it, you should be spending your hard-earned cash on more court time, not overpriced gear. So why settle for less when you can have the best? Make the switch to the Big Dink and experience the difference for yourself. The Big Dink Paddleball Paddles, because you deserve top-notch performance without the top-shelf price tag. Visit TheBigDink.com and elevate your game today. TheBigDink.com You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. The trial of Trump has started again today. They're still in jury selection, and it's been a mess. Two jurors that were seated They went through the screening process. They were questioned by both sides. They got sworn in to be on the jury by the judge, and both of them are now gone. And we're going to talk about that, including we're going to share in just a few minutes an interview with one of the jurors, which is a pretty interesting interview. And the one biggest takeaway she had is insane. But, you know— There's a few things that are wrong here about this trial, other than the things we've been talking about. The judge's daughter was paid $10 million from the Biden-Harris and Adam Schiff campaigns at this political consulting company. Laura Loomer has reported that the judge's wife works for Letitia James. So there's a lot of conflicts. The judge also uh, is a Democrat political donor. I mean, there's it's just a mess. Okay, it's just a mess. This the, the whole trial, everything about it is just not what courtrooms are supposed to be like in the United States. And there's one big thing that's missing that does not have to be missing, and that is a camera in the courtroom. There have been high profile New York trials that were very, very heated trials where cameras were in the courtroom. If you remember, um, remember those police officers years ago mm-hmm. in New York City that shot the unarmed guy? They, he didn't have a gun. They thought it was a gun. It was a wallet, and they shot him over 100 times. That was completely televised on yep. television. And, and let me tell you, that was a very, very polarizing trial. It was caused a lot of problems. And every second of it, all the way through the verdict, was carried. Even when they read the verdict, was carried on television. There's been other New York trials that have been carried on television. So this trial of Trump, because this is an election year, he's the nominee of the Republican Party, it should be completely televised so the American people can see what's going on in there. I think we have a right to know, as opposed to these dribs and drabs of things that are being circulated that are happening in there that we don't know if they're true or not because the press are so biased. There's no cameras. We have these very outdated courtroom sketch artists, which they used to have like in the 70s. And they brought the sketch artists back. And the sketch artist, the, the Pictures he's drawing of Trump are so deformed. I mean, you can't, you can't, you can hardly I don't know tell why he him. Would, if he's doing it on purpose, that's not really good for his business because it makes it look like he has no talent. Like if I yeah. was an artist, I would try to make him look amazing. But he, I, I, I am guessing he is purposely, um, do because those yeah. sketch, those artists are pretty experienced. Mm-hmm. 
Um, this guy did not just come out of art school. And I'm guessing that he's doing that on purpose because he hates Trump. Yeah. Um, it is incredible to me how much Trump, how he just triggers people so much that, that hate him. I don't understand it, but it's not good for, for him to, to do a drawing that's, that doesn't look good. Well, yeah. And I don't get that. Um, so having this trial, everything about it is wrong. And, and I'll tell you guys, a lot of people were upset with me about this years ago. When everyone was saying lock her up about Hillary, mm-hmm. I said, you do not want to start arresting first ladies and presidents because it'll become the new thing. And next thing you know, they'll arrest Trump. They'll arrest Melania and all this. And here we are. They've arrested Trump and he's on trial. And, you know, the, the way the American system works, and I know there's, of course, a lot of people listen to this program that are in countries other than the United States. So you may not be fully aware of how the system works in the United States, but yeah, I'm not going to go through all the details of it, but a jury is supposed to be 100% impartial. That's impossible. Not have any opinions. Donald Trump, out of all the presidents we've had in our lifetime, he is the one that every single person, people that don't even follow news and politics have opinions on no matter where they are in the world. And there's no middle road when it comes to Trump. People either love him or they hate him. A lot on both ends. Love him a lot or hate him a lot. There's no in-between. And New York City is one of the most Democrat areas of America, right? You got New York, you've got uh, Los Angeles, you've got San Francisco and Chicago. These are considered to be the biggest Democrat. There's other liberal places, but those are the big Democrat strongholds. And to to try to put together mm-hmm. a jury of a president of the United States, any president, but especially yeah. a Republican president and Donald Trump in particular, in one of the most historically Democrat cities in America it's impossible. There's I think no, if even if he was guilty, there's no way you could get together no. a jury and have a fair trial. I think if you're any high profile person, the president especially, but today, in today's world of social media um, and Twitter, I don't think it's possible for anybody um, that's a high profile person. For example, um, you have Alec Baldwin. He's famous. He's not president, but everybody knows who he is. Yeah. And, you know, I don't like the guy. He's a good actor. He's a very good actor, but he's an a-hole. But can he get an impartial jury? No. Either people are going to be on the jury that love him as an actor and are going to be sim- like Robert Blake. How many people in that jury grew up watching Robert Blake movies? Or Beretta? Or The Little Rascals? OJ. That jury wasn't impartial. You know what I mean? They were fans of OJs. If you're anybody famous or in the news, it's impossible to be impartial. But, but the I don't think that's even possible in the, these um, days. Yeah, and uh, Robert Blake and OJ were acquitted, and both of them were guilty of sin. Robert Blake was just as guilty as OJ, and he walked. Well, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, that, that yeah. You, can, you cannot, if you're famous especially, but even an everyday person that's in the news, like this, this guy, this Idaho guy that killed these four college kids, I don't, I'm not saying he's innocent. But how can he get an impartial jury in that town where all those kids were slaughtered? Yeah. How can anybody be on that jury without a preconceived idea? This guy's guilty. I want him to fry. I'm pissed. And you know what I mean? Yeah. In today, it's not like it was 50 years ago when all you had were newspapers and TV and you had three TV stations. Now there's information everywhere, online, on your phone, in your hand, available. You're inundated with it. I don't think any jury can be, can be completely impartial anymore. You know, it was, it, it's, it, especially with social media, you know, I was listening to uh, Conan O'Brien interview Ricky Gervais today on uh, Sirius Satellite Radio. And Ricky Gervais, he was, he was, t- he was being, he's very funny, but he um, was, made a good point. He was invited to speak at Oxford, right? So was Conan, they both were. And they, he was talking about all these people that have spoken there over the years, like Gandhi and Churchill. And he said, you know, if, if Gandhi, this was Ricky Gervais, although he told it in a funny way, which I'm not going to try to redo because he, I was only halfway listening. I was in the car and, but it was fun. But he said, if, if Churchill or Gandhi lived today with 
you know, social media, one of them would have said something that got them in trouble. And Absolutely. they and they wouldn't be remembered with this fondness. But that's very true. But this th- this attempt to put together a jury against Donald Trump is less than impossible to do to put together an impartial jury. And by the way, they're they're putting multiple juries together, right? So there's there's this jury in New York. They're going to try to put together a jury in D.C. in the J6 case. That that may depend on that Supreme Court ruling for that hearing this week. They're going to have a jury here in Florida in the documents case and then try to put together another jury in uh, Fulton County, Georgia, in that Fannie Willis case, in that RICO case. So I mean, how many is that? D.C., New York, Florida, that's four. So they're, tr- they're going to try to put together four juries mm-hmm. – of people that are not going to come in with a guilt or innocence already on their mind, and they're going to try to do it four times. It's it it's not possible. It's 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 a case. None of these. Obviously, we've been talking for a long time about these. None of these cases should be in court. I don't believe any president mm-hmm. should be on trial because you can't get a fair trial. And once you start, it's not good for the country. Well, and that's right. Once you start arresting and trying. Uh, presidents. Presidents are different than members of Congress, okay? By the way, when you start arresting and and trying presidents, that becomes the new norm in America. Yeah. And next thing you know, we're a third world country. So, and, and, he, and he did nothing wrong. That's true. Way. Yes, so, exactly. You know. So one of the jurors, one of the two jurors that was dismissed today, I want to play this interview with her. She was on the jury. She got sworn in mm-hmm. yesterday or day before. She came in today. And told the judge she couldn't do it. She couldn't be impartial. And he dismissed her. Well, give credit to her for being honest about, about that. Yeah. So she was interviewed by MSNBC. So I want to play this. And a, a strange thing about this, she's a recent immigrant. She just became a U.S. citizen in uh, August. Mm-hmm. Although the reporter didn't ask her what country she was an immigrant from. So if you recognize the accent, let me know in, in the comments. I have an idea or two, but I'm not sure. Not, not that it's a hun- really relevant. I'm just I'm just curious. So this is uh, MSNBC interviewing the juror who says, I can't do it after they were already on the jury. I, I, I do. Um, this is Kat. She runs a VC fund here um, in Manhattan for folks that are over 60 years um, of age. She was just dismissed as a potential juror. Um, what happened? Why were you dismissed? Because I couldn't be impartial. You couldn't be impartial. So when the judge asked that hand, can you be impartial, you raised your hand and you said you cannot. Exactly. Wow. When, when did you first come? Uh, on Tuesday. On Tuesday. And at- you know, now, one of the reasons a lot of people, in fact, most people, in America, do everything they can do to get out of being on a jury. Yeah. People don't want to be on juries. And the reason people don't want to be on juries, especially a high-profile case, is because they take a long time, mm-hmm. and they pay you like $20 a day. You know, They pay like nothing, and they give you free parking at the courthouse, and, you, and people miss work, and people have work and responsibilities. And being on a jury is not just an inconvenience – it can financially wreck someone because rent and mortgage and car payments are still due, right? right. And, and, and you still got to buy groceries and everything, and especially now with inflation as high as it is. So the, most, the only people that want to be on juries are people that are unemployed or, um, you know, um, have nothing else to do. And this woman here, though, she's a, she's, t- she's a new citizen, just became a citizen in August. She's different than most Americans because she wanted to be on the jury. Mm-hmm. But she's so honest because she's a new American citizen. She's so honest, she recognizes she can't be impartial. So she asked to be taken off the jury. So you got, yeah, I do give her credit for that. But her biggest takeaway from the whole experience was is a little strange. At that point, when did you realize that this was a trial involving the ex-president of the United States, Donald Trump? So we were here on Tuesday from 9 a.m. Yeah. But we realized that it's uh, about this case on uh, 4 p.m. We went into the courtroom and we saw Donald Trump. You went into the courtroom at 4 p.m. on Tuesday and you see Donald Trump. Yeah, we didn't know before that. What was your first thought? I was shocked. I was sitting on the second row, like uh, six feet away. I'd be shocked, too. And when I realized that Trump is there, I was like, oh, wow. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, wouldn't you? I'd, I'd be, be like, I'd be freaking out. I'd and, be like, this is awesome. And y- you guys know I've been around Trump many, many times. 
Trump in person is much bigger than you think. He's a big guy. Yeah. I mean, I know you. everybody knows he's a big guy, but he's yeah, a big guy. Yeah, kid. He's got a six foot seven son. Yeah. And anytime you meet a celebrity, I, I mean, I've been so many celebrities over the years, and, and I know a lot of you probably have. When you meet a celebrity, it's really surreal because you don't really think of them as real people, right. seeing them through television or through your phone until you're with them in person. Yeah. But can you imagine you're brought into a courtroom and you're told you're going to sit in judgment of a president in the United States? That'd be shocking. Let me ask you this. That'd be really shocking too. I know what you're going to say, but I, I don't, I mean, I would, if, okay, if I was called up to be on the jury, of course I'd want to be on it because I'd want to help acquit him, obviously. Yeah, sure that, that's justice. That, you know, so I couldn't be impartial either. And they're going, they're scrubbing through everybody's social media. So you would definitely be kicked off. Yeah. Your social media and stuff, and probably me because I manage all your social media. But if they said to you, can you be impartial? Would you be honest like this woman? Uh, yeah, because you, if you, you're, you're lying to the court, you're committing a crime. Right. So I'd say, no, I you can't. Got, you've got to I say the Trump truth. So yeah. how are they going to find who, who honestly would be the type of person that does not have an opinion on Donald Trump? Um, a space alien that just landed on Earth <laughs> exactly. today. That's it. There's nobody. It's Even impossible. Even kids have opinions on Trump. Yeah. You saw in Harlem the other day, right? Exactly. So you the kids in Harlem. 11 year old kid, I love you, Trump. Yeah. There's no one that does he not have an opinion. He is the most, not only the most famous person of our time, he's definitely the most divisive, the person that incites the most feelings out of people, good or bad. Um, you know, everybody's got an opinion on him and elicits very strong. I mean, people have gotten divorced over Donald Trump. Yeah, I'm there. not joking. My dad, I told you guys before, his best friends that my dad and his step and my stepmom, they had two another couple there that actually fixed them up. They've known them forever. Didn't talk for years, for years. And then the wife passed away and then they got together again with yeah. the husband and decided we're over not going to discuss over Trump. They didn't talk for years over Trump. Wow. And it wasn't my dad and my stepmom, it was the guy and his wife wouldn't talk to them. Um, so now they're friends again, you know, because That's crazy. Wife passed away. But, and my dad would call me and he, this was like his best friend. I've known him my whole life. You know, he knew him before I was born. And he said, he won't talk to me because I support oh Trump. Goodness. And I said, that is so freaking sad. It is, isn't it? Luckily, my best friend likes Trump. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's, it's amazing. This is what he, Trump does to people. Mm -hmm. Unwittingly, he just, you know, he's just living his life. Mm -hmm. How can you get anybody who's not going to have you know, an opinion and I, about this guy? And I'll tell guy? you, you know, before we get back to the juror, because this is great stuff. Before Trump came down the escalator, everyone loved this guy. He had the number one show on NBC television. Everybody loved Trump. The Apprentice and the Celebrity Apprentice. He uh, has been famous since the 70s, but he's been super famous since the 80s. And everyone in this country l always loved Donald Trump. Then he comes down the escalator and, and on a dime, half the people hate him. Give me a break. All right, so let's get back to the uh, juror. I couldn't believe it. What about the people around you? Everybody was shocked. Everybody was frozen. <laughs> uh, no, like frozen, no expressions, nothing. We were all, uh, you know. Did he, did, that he was look, the case. did he look back at you? Did any of the attorneys look back at you at that time? Uh, sometimes Trump would turn his head. Yeah. Uh, but that was it, yeah. Uh, he didn't stand up or anything. Were you following the case before this? I didn't really. I'm, I'm too busy. You're yeah. too busy, but yeah. you knew he was on trial, or you knew he was I going knew, to trial. I knew, yeah, just the headlines, but yeah, too busy to read the details. Um, have you ever served as a juror before? No, that's my first time, because I just became a citizen in August. Yeah. Uh, and that was my first call. And so you just yeah. became a citizen of the yeah. United States, so that means you've never voted in a presidential election. Exactly. You know, this is a crazy thing, because, you know, I... Uh, Saturday's my birthday, guys, I've been telling you, and I'm going to be uh, 53, right? I've been called for jury duty once, and it was before we were married. And we've been married, so it was like over 30 years ago. I got called for jury duty over 30 years ago just once. When did they stop going to the voting Different states do different to, things. To the, I don't know. Different so states do York, different things. So in New York, they obviously go by your 
either your citizenship or your driver's well, license. So many, I'm assuming she has a driver's license. There's a license. lot of people in New York City that don't have driver's licenses. Do you licenses. think somebody should be allowed to be on a jury who's never voted? I guess that doesn't matter. Not everybody They used votes. to do it by voter registration. Different states do different things. But like I said, in, in, in New York City, so f- a lot of people never drive a car, don't have driver's licenses. So I don't know how they do it. Well, she could be a registered voter, just hasn't voted yet. So yeah. they could take it from the voting poll. But Maybe. The, it's amazing. Here's a lot of people, when they, when they become citizens, people register to vote at the same time in the same place a lot. I'd That's like common. to know how she became a citizen. I'd like to know where she's from. Do you recognize the accent? No. I'd mm-hmm. like to know how she became a citizen, how long that took. She's very honest. She's somebody, but she's, but, but I give her credit for being honest about Because she's a new American. Yeah. 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 You get called to be a juror, and this is the jury that you are called to. Yes. What, what was that? That's unbelievable. That is She's unbelievable. Asking her the same what was your impression of, of Donald Trump when you saw him? Um, you know, he looked less orange. Uh, no, that's that's her big takeaway. He looked less orange. <laughs> That's what she said. That was her she big takeaway. She, oh, my God. That's, that's what she said. That's hilarious. <laughs> he looked less orange. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's pretty funny. You know, I will tell you, <laughs> if all the times that I've seen Trump in person oh and God. the last time at Mar-a-Lago, I mean, I was as close to him as I am to you, Kathy, yeah. right now. He's not orange. He's not orange. I don't know how that got started. He's, he doesn't look orange. I've been in his presence in person many times. I bet t- I he doesn't bet look the t- orange. You know how you could turn up the saturation on TV? You on think a picture? they do? I, I promise you they do. I yeah. promise you they do. He definitely yeah. wears like face makeup or something on his face. Well, that's everybody on TV does. But I think he does that because, but, but I noticed when he was, since he's been out, when he's out golfing, he likes to have a tan. He's like George Harrison. He's like old school, likes yeah. to have a tan. And I noticed when he was out golfing a lot, he wasn't using the makeup because he had a lot of coloring. When he was in the White House, he and, wasn't outside so right. much and he was whiter. And I think when he's inside, he's probably yeah. really pasty looking yeah. and white. And, you know, he's yeah. a white guy and he doesn't like the way that looks, doesn't want to look mm-hmm. washed out on TV. Um, you know, he looked less orange, uh, definitely, like more yellowish, <laughs> yellow. Um, nothing else than that. He looks, uh, he doesn't look angry or I think he looks bored. Like he wants this to finish and go he do his bored. stuff. That's how it, yeah. <laughs> Did you have any discussions with other jurors when you left the room about kind of how huge this case was? Yes. How historic it was going to be? Yeah, everybody. Well, yeah. They- now this, this part's interesting because the, reporters don't interview people anymore. No, they don't. Like they used to. So in rare instances like this, when it unless it's like a celebrity or a newsmaker, they don't interview like well, you man know why the they don't. It, well, what, what's happened is they've lost the ability to even know how to do it. And this reporter is not asking really good questions She's at going all. Going in circles. Well, and well they, they, they don't. You, the reason they don't like to interview people is because it's too unpredictable. Well, what she just said they here, can't though, control the message. The, 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 this juror, she asked her one question, which was good, but she didn't ask follow up. Were you and the other jurors talking about being? And she said yes. Jurors are not supposed to talk about the case. So she didn't ask her, well, when? If well, they, she's not a juror. She was dismissed, wasn't she? But w- if she was talking before she was dismissed, if the jurors were talking before they were dismissed, they all should be dismissed. Because this reporter, you understand? Be, yes, because this- You could rep- talk after, but not right. before, Because during. this reporter, like all reporters, has one focus, and that is to destroy Donald Trump. So all of her questions- are targeted on that point. She yeah. doesn't care about anything else that's happening. Yeah. Because, like I said, they can't see the forest for the trees. They, they, all they can focus in on is what soundbite can I get from this woman that can go viral that makes Trump look bad? That'll be, he doesn't look as orange. That'll be the soundbite. But, you know, the if-, if Well, the, that makes him look good. If, if, the, if the jurors are talking before or during the trial, they should all be dismissed. That's wrong. That's against the rules. Or talking to the press. Well, you, yeah. So, the, but when you're a juror, mm-hmm. you, you, even before you're on a jury, you can't talk about these cases. Anyway, back to this. Saying, what were you guys talking about? About this, that's a, it's a historical case, and you know, this is going to define so many things. Um, but at the same time, our job as a juror, right, is to be impartial, like to be unbiased. So um, it was, yeah, it was, you know. Uh, 
weird, like the whole atmosphere. Like, you know, it's such an important, important case at the same time. Yeah. Did you talk to anybody that really wanted to serve on, on, in that jury? That anybody that they wanted Any of to the serve? other jurors that yes. you spoke to? Were there people that said, I want to do this. I want to serve on this jury. I want to be a part of this. Uh, Did anybody no, voice that they, to you? No, but they feel the duty, definitely. They feel the duty. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it... Okay, now, see, this is a lot of interesting information because they feel the duty to do it. That's a little vague. Do they feel a duty to convict? Do they feel a duty to acquit? I mean, you, you, you know, if if they feel they have a duty to do something other than be impartial on a jury, they should be dismissed. And Jesse Waters uh, was talking the other night. He had some inside information from inside the courtroom because he's friends with Don Jr. and Eric. I'm sure he gets mm-hmm. all kinds of... And uh, he was talking about there's activists there, you know, like John Cusack in that movie, Runaway Jury, that there are activists actively trying to get on the jury so that they can go guilty. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, it's impossible. I don't know if I'd, I mean, I'd like to help Donald Trump, but honestly, I don't know if I'd want to be on this jury because it's, they're going to get doxxed eventually, you know, they, oh, yeah. they could try to keep it a secret, but you're eventually going to find out who the jurors are. Yeah. And in this c- culture, you're, you can't win. You can't win. You're damned. If you do, you're damned. If you don't, if you, if you vote acquit, then you're going to have the, the wrath of every liberal. They're going to, the media is going to out, go out to destroy you. you like go they and, did Joe the plumber. And, and you got to go work in, you got to go live in New York city. Yeah, after you exactly. Acquitted it. Could you and imagine? then if you, and then if you, uh, convict, you're going to piss off people there too. Like it's not fair. You did yeah. what you did was wrong. So I, I'd want to, I'd be really be torn, but I, I would have to be honest and say, I can't be impartial. I'm sorry. And like I said, I think our social media would count us out, but tell us what you guys think. And I'll put a poll up. Uh, to, honestly, I know you, most of you love Trump, but would you honestly want to be on this jury and possibly deal with the repercussions. I'd love to be on the jury, on this jury. I'd love to Well, be I know you would. You I'd wouldn't be worry about, of course, you're in the media, so it would probably help you. Oh, it'd, but, bur- it'd be a boost to my career. Yeah, <laughs> sure, <laughs> Slightly. Sure. Did you well, feel I, that they duty as put you a on new it. citizen of, of this country? Was there a part of you that said, I want to serve? I feel the duty, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a citizen, yeah, and I have responsibilities, right? Yeah. Of course, I feel the duty, yeah. yeah. Does this make you want to follow this case even more? Not really. No? No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, Kat, I'm so thankful that you took the time to talk to us, and I, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Um, quite a moment as your it first is. time serving yeah. in, in a jury and being it's a, gr- makes a, a new good citizen story. of this country. It yeah. makes for a very good story. Yeah. Thank you so yeah, much. I have a Thanks. question. Yeah. Before you let Kat go honor. there. Right. Before, I, before you let Kat go, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. just curious, because yeah. she talks about duty. Come on back, Kat, come back. <laughs> if she does it right away. Yeah. Uh, she talks about the sense of duty, but that she's here, it was she's also here. in part her duty, right, to, to be very honest, and she couldn't be impartial, she felt. Yeah. And given she's spoken with others who were around her, does she get a sense that there will be a jury that can be fair and impartial selected at the end of the day? So Anna is our anchor who's in the chair right now, and she's just wondering as we're talking about this idea of duty, right, and this idea of being fair and impartial, do you feel like the people that you were speaking with um, in that jury room that you sat with all day on Tuesday, that they can put together a fair and impartial jury because of that sense of duty? Do you think that's possible? I'm not sure about that. Really, why? You know, everybody has biases and... You know, you know, stereotypes in their mind. So you have to be a really, you know, deep and, uh, you know, fair person, which is very hard to do, right? Yeah. In order to serve as a jury. I hope they do. I mean, this is justice, right? Um, I hope they do, yeah. Thank you so much, Kat. Now I'm going to let you go. Okay. Now, um, that, that's something. So she's, she knows these people in there. So she says they can't be fair. And, you know, another thing they didn't ask her about, see, this woman that dismissed herself, you know, in in America, you you, you become a citizen, you're a citizen, you you know, she's been a citizen since August, that's cool, and a great thing, and she has a lot of civic responsibility because, but they didn't ask her key questions here, and um, I wanted to save this till we were done, because that's the end of the interview with her, uh, and we'll get through this before we break. Um. 
the in every single poll in this country during this presidential election, the number one issue is the southern border issues that we got going on. This woman is an immigrant. She's only she's been an American citizen for less than a year. She, uh, listening to her civic responsibility, how honest she is about her civic responsibilities, the sense of duty she feels. She came here through a legal process that probably took quite some – like your mother is a legal immigrant to the United States. It took, probably took her years to become a U.S. citizen. And oh, My mom, yeah. And, and, and this juror here, I promise you, it took her many years to become a U.S. citizen. She went through a process and everything else. She and my mom married an American. And, and had kids and, and she still could It took 14 years to do and it. And she had kids and she still – That's right. Uh, so I would like them to have asked this woman her thoughts on the southern border, what process she went through to become a U.S. citizen, et cetera, et cetera, and her thoughts on illegal immigration and all this stuff that's going on. They, they don't want ask, to do that because they didn't ask afraid her of that. her answer. That's right. Her and And, you know, this woman here – I think she would have been a not guilty verdict on the jury. I, I was, I, well, I was going to say, I don't. I'm, I'm very interested why they didn't ask her. I would trust. How her. do you feel about Trump? That would have been my first question. Yeah, you say you. This reporter sucked. Like you said, I would say to her, okay, you say you cannot be impartial. Wow. How do you feel about President Trump? Do you like him or you hate him? Mm-hmm. Boom, that would have been my first question right out of the game. And I would have asked her again at the end if she was evasive in the beginning after she loosened up. Because maybe she loves Trump. And maybe she don't know. And maybe maybe she can't be uh, impartial because she's upset as as a legal immigrant who went through a a, a lot of hoops to become a legal yeah. uh, to become a U.S. citizen. She may be very upset at the southern border, and she may be voting for Trump because of his position on we'll the on the know. border. That, well, she she might get interviewed by some other people, but I think she's going to fade away and not do interviews. I just I don't see this woman doing a lot of interviews like. Yeah. Uh, She's not going to be like Michael Avenatti and move in the TV studios. No. We might see her once or twice, but not much more. Now, I want to tell you guys, the spring sale, the $25 spring sale extravaganza at MyPillow.com with our promo code Kane at checkout continues, K-A-N-E. And there are so many top and some of the most popular MyPillow products that are part of this spring sale, all right? The sheets, um, some of the pillows. Slip the my pillow slippers, the towel sets. Kathy, we got to get some more towels. Yes. Okay. You can never have too many my pillow towels, and those are the best towels. You know, I um my entire life I've been drying off with towels like everybody else, and uh, I've never had a real towel until I got the my pillow towel. Mike Lindell in the commercial says towels that actually work. Mm-hmm. What a concept! That's what he says. That is so true. And that when is, you see so them compare, I've I've thrown out all our old towels. Yeah. Because they just don't compare. No. When you see, when you get the my pillow towels, you will never want to use your old towels again. No. And there's many, many other things there uh, during the $25 spring sale extravaganza. Now, you have to use our promo code Kane at checkout, K A N E, at mypillow.com. And remember, whenever you use our promo code Kane, you are supporting all of my content the YouTube channel, my podcast, the radio show, everything. Are you ready to take your fitness journey to the next level? Introducing Stay Fit BYT, the ultimate fitness app that's designed to help you achieve your goals. And the best part, it's only $12.99. Just Google Stay Fit BYT. With Stay Fit BYT, you'll have access to a wide variety of workouts, personalized training plans, and expert guidance right at your fingertips. Whether you're a beginner or a fitness enthusiast, Stay Fit BYT has something for everyone. Get ready to sweat, burn calories and have fun with the stay fit byt extensive library of workout videos they have everything from high intensity interval training to strength training as well as yoga you can do it all from the comfort of your home or wherever you are stay fit byt also offers nutrition tips meal plans and progress tracking features to help you stay on top of your health and wellness journey don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to transform your body and your mind download the stay fit byt app today just google stay Stay Fit BYT and start your fitness revolution for just $12.99. Stay Fit BYT, your ultimate fitness companion. Are you ready to unleash your full potential? Then Google Stay Fit BYT. Consult a healthcare professional before starting any new exercise program. Monthly subscription fees apply. Terms and conditions may apply. 
Young adventurers, it's time to take a journey through American history like never before with The U.S. Presidents, a kid's journey through U.S. history. Book one of the U.S. Presidents trilogy. Be inspired, amused, and amazed from author Stephen White. Available on Amazon. With this book, you'll explore the lives of America's most influential leaders from George Washington and Abraham Lincoln to today's presidents. With its captivating narrative, each president will come alive, allowing readers to experience their successes, tribulations, and their enduring legacies. You'll learn everything about the presidents, from their humble beginnings to grand estates, from small towns to bustling cities. You'll discover the diverse backgrounds that shaped these extraordinary individuals. Young readers will absorb key historical facts and gain a deeper understanding of America's rich diversity. And teachers, this book is perfect for your classroom reading collection. This remarkable adventure through American history will inspire your students to dream big, make a difference, and shape the future. The U.S. Presidents, a kid's journey through U.S. history. Book one of the U.S. Presidents trilogy. Be inspired, amused, and amazed. From author Stephen White. Order your copy right now on Amazon. Available in Kindle and paperback. Are you in need of a little encouragement? Are you searching for a spark of intrigue? Could you use a good laugh? Then check out Genesis-Revelation.life. Genesis-Revelation.life is your go-to destination for unique and heartfelt designs that resonate with your spirit. Picture this. Thousands of meticulously crafted items, each one with a personal touch, from the whimsical to the profound. The designs at Genesis-Revelation.life cover a wide spectrum, ensuring there's something for everyone. Whether you're drawn to the warmth of Scripture, or prefer non-scripture items, they've got you covered. T-shirts, leggings, totes, headbands, crossbody bags, blankets, journals, napkins, aprons, coasters, drinkware, and that's just the beginning. But what sets Genesis-Revelation.life apart from the rest is simple. A sprinkle of humor, a dash of intrigue, and a layer of comfort. Each design tells a story, seeking to connect with you on a deeper level. In a world that often feels impersonal, Genesis-Revelation.life stands out as a place where every item is designed with heart and soul. Tell your story with these unique designs. Shop now and let your spirit shine. And make sure to share the store on all your social media so your friends can discover Genesis-Revelation.life too. Genesis-Revelation.life where every design is a connection waiting to happen. Start shopping right now. Genesis-Revelation.life in a world that's torn apart by war, two young souls find themselves caught in the crossfire of fate. In the book, from author Jan Farrigan, Lightning in the Desert, available on Audible. In Lightning in the Desert, follow Kalia and the young soldier as she navigates the chaos of war. Once childhood friends, they're now thrust into adulthood far too soon. Together, they must confront tough decisions that will shape their destinies. This compelling 18-minute audiobook is the first in the three-part Specific Heat of Water series. The second part, A Change in the Wind, was just released, and part three is scheduled for release in September 2024. This is a powerful story of love, loss, and the ultimate test of human resilience. Order your copy right now on Audible. Lightning in the Desert, from author Jan Farrigan. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. All right, so everyone knows how inflation is hitting food prices. It's outrageous. And things have really gotten out of control. And luckily, it's just the two of us. Our daughter's grown. She's living on her own now. And it's just the two of us. If we had a little kid at home and everything, I mean, oh, and people that have multiple kids. And there's a video that was put on TikTok yesterday. It's going viral. It it started going viral yesterday on TikTok, but now it's made it like in the mainstream media. And a woman goes into a Whole Foods and she buys an apple and it costs $7 for an apple and let me play this this is this is crazy i literally just said grocery shopping right at whole foods and look at this look at this guess how much this is okay this is this it's an apple it's called a sugar beet an apple apparently look at it the size of my palm i thought it was probably just like two to three dollars i scanned this mother effort i scanned it seven 
seven. Literally, the moment I scanned it, I was like, wait, what? Because the thing is, I had to weigh it, and it was like one point. Oh, I don't know. And I weighed it, and then there was like one of the staff members. I was like, um, excuse me, is this actually seven dollars? And she like input all her information. She was like, yeah, it's seven dollars. What economy? Genuinely, what economy are we living in that it, it costs $7 to buy an apple? I could have sworn, like, some other apple that I bought from here was not $7. That's crazy. That's crazy. Like, $7 for a latte? Okay. This apple better be tasting so good. Because I was just me an apple. I was like, oh my god, maybe I want apple with peanut butter and cinnamon. This apple, better be, and, and this thing, this thing that I got, this tofu was only $4, I think, I think it was $4. Uh, I already think that paying like $5 for an apple is a lot. Seven dollars. Okay, I mean, she's big on the F word, this girl. Yeah, I mean, my is. goodness. I mean, I, I don't remember girls talking like that when, you know. When, but, you know, the, the, the $7 apple, I don't know how extreme that is because I've gone to this path. Uh, it, we do all of our grocery shopping through Instacart. We rarely go to the store. And the reasons we do that is many. But I, I, I think it saves us money because we don't buy anything extra, right? You just get what's on the list. Because if I, if I go to the store, I'm buying Twizzlers. I'm buying all kinds of stuff, you know. But if you do just the Instacart, I, you know, you don't get the extra stuff, but I have my head in the sand. I don't like to pay attention to the prices. You do the Okay, I'm looking shopping. at Publix now Here on the Florida. Instacart, okay, yeah. in Florida. And obviously you shop at Whole Foods, you're going to pay more money, okay, because it's quote unquote organic. Yeah, whatever. Um, whatever that means. But it's still a lot for one apple. The most expensive apple they have at Publix is an Envy apple. I've never heard of that. I always get the Red Delicious apples. Those are my favorite. Yeah. Brian likes the Granny Smith. Yes. Uh, the Granny sour. Smith are, um, an organic Granny Smith is $1.59 each. And the Envy apple, which is the most, is two thirty seven each. I don't know what she's talking about. Some sugar. How much? Two thirty seven is the most expensive. That's, That's still for a lot for an apple. A Red Delicious is $1.39 each and um she has an organic apple it used to be five now these it's are seven. organic okay a granny smith organic is a dollar organic organic me supposedly means that it you know has less pesticides but here's the thing when you go to Publix, and somebody had put this on facebook or something that used to and you used to work at Publix that used to that works yeah. at Publix or what in the produce section they said that the fruit there is continuously watered down Mm -hmm. Okay, they spray it all the time. Yeah. You see them spraying it, and it's cold in there. Yeah. It's cold in there. So that water does not evaporate, or does that make it moldy? Like having all well, this water so spraying quickly, on it does. It doesn't have time for that. Okay, so they spray it. So they're they're spraying the fruit anyway, to, I'm assuming, to, to get the pesticides off, and everybody washes fruit. I even, when I get fruit, I even wash it with soap and water, like, Really? I, like if I get an apple, yeah, I take a little bit of soap, a little bit of Dawn. That's and, crazy. And what, well, there's, it's, they're full of pesticides. When, they spray them so much. I, I might run it into water, maybe. That's no, I it. add a little bit of soap and I do it. Oh I, I obviously really? I rinse, I, yep, I and I rinse it off. Not, not an orange. I rinse off an orange with just water because well, I don't the need peel the peel off. But not an apple. You eat the peel or strawberries. That's a little extreme. Dish soap, you really do that? I've never noticed you doing that. Just a little bit, and then I rinse all that off. You must do that in off. secret because you don't want people to see you doing that. I've never seen you do that. Well, anyway, That's crazy. I just do a little bit, just a little drop, just a little you drop. You learned. 27 years we've been and, married. I've never seen you do that. And then I wash all that off just to, just to be safe because I, I don't like – I worry about pesticides and everything. Okay, now, if you get – now, we used to buy this for Emily when she was little for her lunch. You can buy peeled apples Oh yes, that come in a little bag, the yeah, crunch pack. I love those. And we used to buy those because I felt guilty if I didn't put fruit in Emily's lunch. So I packed her like these massive lunches with fruit and cookies and all kinds mm -hmm. of things. So the fruit peeled apples, which come pre-sliced, pre-peeled, are five nineteen. Okay. So, but but the most expensive one, like I said, is an envy apple. It is uh, whatever I said, two fifty nine. That's still a lot for an apple. So Whole Foods, okay. So she, it is a lot. She's in Boston, which is a big, you know, bigger city than where we live. She's in Whole Foods, which is going to be, you're going to pay more money. You're going to pay more for food at Whole Foods. I mean, and everything's more expensive there. 
Um, but I would say reasonably, considering the apples at Publix are typically a dollar sixty each, which is the average. I would say if I went to the Whole Foods downtown, which we have one in downtown Boca here, and I saw the apples, I would be pretty upset if they were seven dollars. I would be like, "This is ridiculous." I mean, I can wash yeah. an apple and wash off all the pesticides if I need to. I guess organically, maybe it's grown in a certain way. I don't know, too, but too much about it. I always thought it meant that they don't use pesticides, but then I read that that's all but BS you know, and they use them anyway. Here's the thing, though, about inflation. They have to keep the bugs away. So. A lot of the things that are going up, you can cut back on. But the problem is inflation is causing things to go up that you can't avoid, not just gas. I'll give you an example. Right. Everybody um, needs to eat fruit. Yeah, but you can or you get, get different kinds of things. But there's some things that you can't help. Like, for example, um, I thought this was uniquely us, and I'm pleasantly surprised that it's not. But because uh, our, our, our auto insurance just went up through the roof. Oh, and God, yeah. I've had the same auto insurance company it's ridiculous. since I was in high school. I've had the same auto insurance we company. Both have, we both we, have. Both have, Kathy and I have had the same insurance company yeah. since both of us were in high school. Yep. And it just went up a lot. And we don't have accidents or anything on no. our insurance. No. And uh, I read an article a couple of days ago that auto insurance is going up nationwide because the cost to repair vehicles has gone up because of inflation. Auto repairs have gone up. So when insurance companies have to pay out for an auto repair, the cost is a lot more. So they're driving up the insurance. Car insurance is something you can't skimp on. You got to have it. What you see happening is- You can't is say, I don't want to have We auto are turning insurance. into Russia. We're turning into a third world country where you can't afford basic food. Yeah. And you can't afford, like you said, everything's so expensive right now. It's ridiculous. I mean, everything's like double or triple what it was when Trump was in office. But- I promise you this girl voted votes a Democrat just by looking at her. She's a young Asian chick. She's an influencer on TikTok. I could be wrong, but is that Apple, is that outrage enough for her to vote for Trump? No. I promise you. <laughs> I don't she know, lives Kathy. in Boston. Depends on how much she likes her organic I mean, apples. Is, is that enough is is there enough outrage from liberals, hardcore liberals? To actually, I, are they going to vote for Trump or are they just not going to vote well, for Biden? The, the rule of thumb which is just as bad for him. The rule of thumb in American elections, there's an old phrase that they don't use anymore. Yeah. But it's an old phrase. People vote their pocketbook. That's, and, what, that's what Reagan used to and say. And I, I wish that that would come back because over everything, the, the first thing people care about is the price of things, which are- Sure, you got to live. And that apple may be extreme because it's some organic ripoff thing at the Whole Foods. But, That's a lot, But though. the prices of everything have gone up. I mean, I had to fill the car up today. It was the most it's, it's cost me in a long How time to it? fill up the car. Um, My I, car, your car. Your, your car. Okay. Kathy has a Mini Cooper. I have a Mini Cooper. And it's it used 10 to- 10 gallons. Yeah, it's a, it, it, was, it was a lot. But I don't remember the exact price, but it was a lot. And I was like, oh my goodness, it- the price was moving up so quick because you know the, the price that I was like, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. um, so there were some things you can't cut back on. You can get a cheaper apple, but you still got to buy gas. You still got to you know buy car insurance, which is going up. You but know? you shouldn't living in this country, and when you're at work, when you work, you shouldn't have to make those kind of a, a concessions because the government can't get their act well, together. You all, shouldn't have to say, you know what. I want this sugar apple or whatever the hell is because this is what I like. But because it's seven freaking dollars, I'm going to have to get a Granny Smith, well, which I don't thing. like. You shouldn't have to make this here's, kind of decisions. Here's the thing. The you price, should be able to afford that apple. Every problem that we have in this country and in this world today, except the southern border problem, except the southern border problem, every other problem, I'm talking about Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Uh, I'm talking about the war in Israel, and I'm talking about inflation here. It is all caused by the same thing, driving up the price of oil. Uh, because what's happened is Russia is an oil-producing country, mm -hmm. as is Iran. And w uh, R Russia – when oil went up, Russia all of a sudden was flush with cash. So Russia had extra money. They still have a country yeah. they got to run. So now that oil is so much money, they have more money to fund an army to invade. And this country, inflation is driving up oil. Right. So most every pro – They're getting rich. We're getting if, poor. If the oil prices weren't on purpose pushed up by Joe Biden because they worry shut down the Keystone Pipeline and such, yeah. there's a very good chance 
that Putin would not have invaded Ukraine because he wouldn't have had the money. Sure. He's, he's flush in cash. That's right. Because the oil prices are well, up. Well, plus other countries are getting oil from Russia too. Germany, all these other countries that high would prices. normally be getting oil from us. That's right. Are getting it from them. At so inflated prices. They're so getting Putin's enriched. And, and so who's, who's Putin's friend, Trump or Biden? It's ridiculous to say, and they had um, a guy on the news. I saw the clip on Twitter. I can't remember who it was. But he said it's ridiculous to say that he was on CNN, that Trump is Putin's friend. And he said Biden yeah. is the one who's buying all their oil yeah. and giving them more money. And driving said, the price he said of it when up. Trump was in office, we weren't buying oil from them. Mm -hmm. He said we had sanctions against them. Yeah. So how is he Putin's friend and Biden isn't? Biden exactly. is the one help is helping him financially. Exactly. And, and, and Biden is funding these wars on both sides. Correct. Now, I want to thank our Patreon supporters for their support of the program. And- you know, if you'd like to support the program, a great way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. And there's a link in the episode description uh, to our Patreon page. You can either click the link or copy and paste it, depending on the platform. It takes you to the Patreon page and walks you through it. And there's a lot of perks and benefits to becoming a Patreon supporter, including commercial-free editions of all of our podcast episodes. And one of those benefits, our top Patreon supporters get a live, on-air thank you shout-out on each and every episode. So the names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Wesley, Macho, Mike P, Carlos, Paulette, John, Heather, David, Maria in Texas, Richard, Alice, K-Mac, Lee Zepp, Shauna, Constance, George, and Brandon. These are our top Patreon supporters. Thank you all for your support. And again, there's a link in the episode description and every episode description to our Patreon page. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and Coz Kathy. We will talk to you next time.